President Buhari arrived Saudi Arabia for future investment initiative summit. Nigerian Navy seeks intervention of legislature to facilitate budgetary allocation for improved maritime security. Plus, Technology Incubation Center equips entrepreneurs with skills to boost medium-scale business. Details and more in just a moment. A warm evening to you and welcome to the news. I am Justina Etam. President Muhammad Buhari has arrived to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia for the Future Investment Initiative Conference. A senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Yar Bashevu, announced in a statement that Buhari arrived Saudi Arabia at 11.50 p.m. on Monday. The president was received at King Khalid International Airport by the deputy governor of Riyadh, Prince Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Abdulaziz. Shebu added that President Buhari, alongside other world leaders, will participate in the opening ceremony of the event today and the three day. Shebu added that President Muhammad Buhari, alongside other world leaders, will participate in the opening ceremony of the event on Tuesday and the three day plenary sessions focused on the theme for the fifth edition of the summit, Invest in Humanity. President Muhammad Buhari has unveiled the CBN's digital currency, e -Naira. The launch of the e -Naira is a culmination of several years of research work by the Central Bank of Nigeria in advancing the boundaries of payment system in order to make financial transactions easier and seamless for every strata of the society. The use of e -Naira will work via USSD without relying on internet connectivity to drive financial inclusion. According to the report, Nigerians should expect to see additional functionality of the Naira. Providing entrepreneurs in the small and medium scale business with technology, diversifying economy, assisting in technology development, and emerging researchers through business incubation is the focus of the five-day training workshop organized by the Technology Incubation Center in Calabar. Correspondent to the Aleon reports that about 150 participants will be trained on tying of headgears, making of handbags, shoes, acoustic, and sound speaker. Declaring the workshop open, Deputy Director National Board for Technology Incubation, Benin Zonal Office, Mr. Nwankwo Ugochuku, who represented the Director General of the Ministry, says the training is designed to scale up technology to assist small and medium scale entrepreneurs tackle the enormous challenges of setting up businesses and carrying out research. For the participants to take it seriously, because that's what we help them in life, no knowledge that is lost. The skill that we get here can put food on their tables and take care of their families. Representatives of the South South Zone E, Ms. Agatha Efa, and the Centre Manager Victor Rock tax participants on the need to take advantage of the training in order to add value to their lives. Yeah, in this training is to develop this local talent. These are the raw materials that we have now. And our responsibility is to develop them. And when you have these enterprises, jobs is created. And when job is created, just like I said, definitely there are so many organs that will, that will benefit. The government will benefit, the individual will benefit, the research institutions will benefit, and a lot of other persons, directly or indirectly. Special guests at the workshop and general manager NTA Calabar, Mr. Samuel Olalude, emphasized the need for participants to maximize this rare opportunity to contribute their quota to national development. Because if you are paying for this training, you will have to pay a lot of money. So because government is not intervening, I want you to take it seriously. At the end of the day, as you grow up and you expand, you remember TIC, that they have sold the soul in your life. And so you too will spread it. Some participants speak on their expectations and how they intend to impact the society positively at the end of the workshop. I am so blessed and opportuned to be in this uh, program because um, it will help me you know, develop skills that at the end of it, if I put it to practice, 
it will help me to employ labor. Currently, it will equally help me to be independent. I really want to say thank you so much to the government for providing this opportunity to us. I want to say may God bless them. At the end of this uh, training, if I'm able to get finances to build my uh, business, I will employ some persons and probably get my raw material from the same country. It's going to benefit me very well. If I, if I make money, at least I can use it to help myself, support my family and help others. National Board for Technology and Incubation was established under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Incubation to pursue this commercialization of technologies and technical innovations using technology incubation for social, economic competitiveness aimed at improving the livelihood of the citizenry. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. And still on technology, Nigeria is blessed with diverse talents that are capable of proffering solutions to challenges facing the nation. That was demonstrated at the Innovation Hub Research and Development for Solution Workshop in Abuja, Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. For 10 days, these scientists drawn from selected universities across the six geopolitical zones of the country worked closely with mentors and experts in science, technology and innovation. Twelve of the scientists were grouped into four teams to identify a challenge in the Nigerian society and profile an evidence-based solution. Value addition through innovative research is the cutting edge difference. Team crop plants, team environment, team nutrition, and Team Sustainable Cities all showcased their innovation. There is a special device that was created to monitor pesticides and keep the health uh, condition of rice fields for rice growers. And there is a special device that doesn't exist anywhere in the world that identified the metals that exist in smoke. For the organizer, government-private sector partnership is key to national development. If you continue to challenge this way, there are so much product out there and that uh, Nigerian uh, in, uh, industrial or manufacturers could buy it and commercialize for the purpose of making our country industrial life. Research and development is very important for innovation and um, innovation is very essential uh, for nation building. The workshop is aimed at assisting the academia in redirecting their focus to viable solution-driven researches that will translate into innovations, inventions, and breakthrough for the nation. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The Eastern Naval Command of the Nigerian Navy is seeking the intervention of the legislature to facilitate budgetary provision for funding and enhanced maritime security. Flag Officer Commanding Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral Sanusi Ibrahim, made the appeal during the visit of the House of Representatives Committee on Navy. Correspondence tells us more. The visit of the House of Representatives Committee on Navy to the Eastern Naval Command is part of its oversight function aimed at appraisal of activities and projects of the force. Counting achievements of the Eastern Naval Command for the period under review, the Flag Officer Commanding Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral Sanusi Ibrahim, intimates that 42 projects are being executed with 16 completed while 26 are ongoing highlighting challenges encountered by the command the command therefore recommends that the house committee on navy should facilitate the construction of jetties at four operating base in Dhaka, four operating base Boni, and the naval outpost in Niku, as well as the upgrade an extension of Nigerian Navy Ship Pathfinder and Nigerian Navy Ship Victory Jetties. This is considering the fact that these projects are capital intensive and beyond the budgetary provisions of the Nigerian Navy. Chairman House of Representatives Committee on Navy assures that the Hydrographic Agency Bill and Reviewed Armed Forces Act, when assented, will address some of the challenges hindering smooth operations of the Nigerian Navy. The House Committee on Nigerian Navy 
under my own leadership and the ninth house of representative under right from Bufemi Bajabi Amila will continue to do its best to ensure that there is accountability in what National Assembly appropriated for, either in times of budgetary process, in times of special interventions and grants and what have you. The committee was conducted around some of the projects executed by the command. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Governor Aminu Bello Masari of Katsina State has advocated declaration of state of emergency on security as panacea to addressing the persistent security challenges in the country. The governor stated this at the opening of third quarter general conference of speakers of state's House of Assembly holding in Katsina. Orwell Haliru reports. The general meeting of the Speaker's Conference was convened to discuss and profile solutions to insecurity challenges in the country. The theme of the conference is the menace of insecurity in the country and the roles of state assemblies to restore peace and order. This is with the hope that the legislative frameworks in the country at the state level will complement the efforts of the federal government in addressing insecurity situations. This is the time, therefore, that all hands must be on deck to fight the menace of insecurity for the good of our nation. As representatives of the people at the grassroots, we are indeed worried and disturbed by the negative trend of the menace of insecurity in the nation. It's an opportunity for the renewal and dynamism of the legislative functions. My idea was this opportunity to call on all the dear colleagues for a diligent and robust participation in the procedure. Governor Amini Bella Masari reiterates that security agencies are doing their best to bring an end to the persistent insecurity challenges, adding that more is needed to be done. I wish to call on the federal government to declare emergency on the national security in order to bring an end to loss of lives and properties across the state. Today conference will enable the speakers from state assemblies across the country to discuss and chat a way forward on the menace of insecurity. In Kazana, Awal Haluru, NTA News. So, further promote amicable relationship among farmers and headsmen in Akwaibom State and anti grazing law implementation committees at the rural areas of the state have been inaugurated. Evelyn Badu Ekbo reports that the committee are to map out strategies to ensure effective implementation of the law. The anti-open grazing law provides for the establishment of ranches and livestock administration, regulation and control. To this end, the committees are urged to understudy the law and come out with best possible strategies towards its effective implementation at the rural areas. The Commissioner for Agri, who is also the Chairman of the State Committee, Dr. Glory Edit, charges members of the committees to ensure that crops and livestock farmers are protected for high productivity. To a poor farmer, the crop is just like the cow to a livestock farmer or the goat to a goat farmer. And the crop farmer will not be happy for the cow or any livestock to destroy his or her crop. So we depend on each other. Other stakeholders, including the Attorney General of the State and Commissioner for Justice, Ukodom, says the law will create an enabling environment for different kinds of agriculture to thrive in the state. So what we're doing here is the steps towards enforcing the law that had been passed. They are actually the cornerstone to the successful enforcement of this law because a lot of the infringement of the law comes from the local communities. And uh, the beauty of this law is that it has already stopped at protecting our farmlands and our farmers. It has also put in place measures to accommodate the cattle rearers. The committees comprises local government chairmen, directors of agri services, land officers and community leaders as members of local government committees in the 31 local government areas of the state. In Uyo, Evelyn Badu Epo, NT News. It's time now for a break. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>
Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed 711 new cases of COVID-19 from 15 states as of 25th of October 2021. Statistics shows that Delta State topped the charts with 508 cases, followed by Plateau with 41 cases, Rivers 40, Federal Capital Territory 32, Enugu 24, Lagos 19, Imo 16, Cross River and Ekiti have 9 cases each, Abia 4, Benue and Kano 3 cases each, Bauchi, Bayosa and Ogun recorded 1 case each. Meanwhile, the total confirmed cases of the virus in the country stands at 211,171 with 202,674 persons treated and discharged, while 2,884 persons died of the virus. Meanwhile, normalcy has gradually returned to the education system. The need for all stakeholders, especially parents and caregivers, to adopt measures that will enable their children to cover up for the lost grounds has been brought to the fore. Schools administrators in Uyo, the Akwaibom State Capital, met this submission while evaluating the damages caused by the COVID-19 era and projecting for the 2021-2022 academic session. Iforma Aikoje has the report. Some parents for the fear of COVID had decided to keep their children back at home. They lost a whole school year. Coming back the school year, you see the children have almost forgotten everything that they had learned. Indeed, the damage caused by the COVID-19 pandemic on both the education system and its effect on the school children is enormous as the school calendar was disorganized, thereby hindering the flow of the curriculum. However, as normalcy begins to return to the system, with the resumption of the 2021-2022 academic year, school managers in Oyo say they are investing every necessary resource to cover up the lost ground. The fourth week, we have started with quiz competition to see how our children are responding for the past three weeks. We have extra classes, we have lessons and all that, and we also encourage the parents to join us. Many of them can, they can get lesson teachers to make sure that the children are brushed up. Meanwhile, the school children are optimistic that the new school year will be very productive. I'm preparing very hard to write my Nico and my Wayek and my jam examination next year. Our teachers are giving us everything that we need to make us write our exam by ourselves. As the 2021-2022 academic year continues, education experts say it has become very pertinent for all stakeholders to invest more in packages that will help the children make up for the lost time. In Uyo, Iforma Aikuchi, NTN News. Birthdays are moments of reflection and fun times, especially when the celebrants has had a long and eventful time. This is the story of one-time legislator with a widespread fellowship who turned 62 and to spice his moments, his committee of friends chose to host him to a surprise birthday party. Achi Wambasi tells us about the man of the moment as she captured the joyous events for NTA News. Many friends and admirers of the man celebrating have come to share in his joy. It's three scores and two for this legislator, who is loved by his people, and this the birthday party therefore is intended to be a surprise, but as it is, there is a carnival of some sort. Senator Bassi Edith Otu, fondly called Sweet Prince, is a celebrant with this massive turnout, which many attribute to the celebrant's passionate disposition to assist people to realize their goals in life through mentorship, scholarships, and economic empowerment. Prince Bassi Edith Otu's empowerment programs and accountable stewardship, both as members of the House of Representatives and Senator, has permanently lifted thousands of cross-reverence out of poverty, 
therefore placing him as one of the best federal lawmakers Cross River State has ever produced in terms of human capacity development. Some friends and associates eulogize the celebrant for his people focused representation, which undoubtedly endeared him to members of a senatorial zone and beyond. I enjoy the relationship working with him for four years. He is a leader, the constitutional leader. Prince Otu, wherever you are, you are watching and I know that I have wished you God's blessings, long life, favor, and open doors in all you do. Uh, Prince Otu is a great man. He's a man who has gone through thick and thin in Cross River State. He has sacrificed. Even when it seems as if there is no hope, he gave Cross Riverians hope. Flanked by his wife, some top government officials and party stalwarts, it was time to court his birthday cake. Sweet Prince and his wife are thankful to friends, associates, secretary to the Cross River State government, legislators, APC party stalwarts, and local government chairman for the show of love. There's nothing that holds the world together and induce and instill peace like love. If we love one another and fact that we do for that, we will face one another. Is everything you want? No matter what is too much, when a man is too handsome, you call him beautiful. My beautiful was kind, kind-hearted, He's very passionate, compassionate. He's um, a man loved by all. And this is wishing the distinguished many happy return. In Calabar, Achibo Basi, NTA News. A very happy birthday to Senator Prince Basi Otu. It was a moment of celebration as the presbytery, officers and members of the Apostolic Church, Nigeria, Ikot Mukebre District, rolled out the drums to receive the presiding pastor, Dr. and Dickness Eteng Ikwi Etobe, into the flock in the district. Odialenyo reports that it was time to give honor to whom honor is due. The District Secretary Richard Epenyon, on behalf of the officers and members of the district, described Dr. Eten Ikwi Etobe as an evangelist, a great spiritual teacher and mentor. Chairman of the occasion, Basi Inyang, charged Dr. Etobe to remain focused in the discharge of the spiritual assignment to enhance the spiritual well-being of the Econ Kebre Apostolic District. What he has seen here and continue his good works because it is his good from his good works that he has seen the Lord honoring him with this clement weather and they turn out here uh, to uh, uh, celebrate with him here. The celebrant Dr. and Dickness Eteng Ikwi Etobe described the honor done them by the church as overwhelming, thanking God for his faithfulness. I give God all the glory who has taken everything the way he liked. God has really honored me in this place. This is a very small place, very small district, newly created just last year. I'm the first pastor in this area. So the work is very, very enormous and tedious. But God has been with me. I'm grateful to God for the fact that he has kept us alive healthy and strong. But the way God has laid in the hearts of the people to sacrificially offer as unto God, I return all praise to God. The induction and thanksgiving service in honor of Dr. and Dickness Eteng A.P. Etobe was attended by presbyters from other apostolic church districts including Savongiri District and other assembly within and outside Ikor and Nobong area. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. Finally, a reminder of the top stories. 
President Muhammad Buhari has arrived Saudi Arabia for the Future Investment Initiative Summit. The Nigerian Navy is seeking the intervention of the legislature to facilitate budgetary allocation for enhanced maritime security. We also told you that the Technology Incubation Center has empowered entrepreneurs with skills to boost medium-scale businesses. That's it on the news. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful time.